This is part two of Bing Maps and Power Apps. If you haven't seen the first video, I recommend that you go over and find that one and watch it first. In the first video, we set up our input fields so our users can enter in addresses or um, GPS coordinates. And then we set up some buttons to query the Bing API and get information um, such as coordinates and different things based on that data our users entered. So in this video, we're going to set up map components and display some information uh, about the location for our users to see on the screen. So let us begin. We will start by adding an image to the screen. So I'm going to go to media image and this will be our map. So we can set this up to display um, the map of the location. So I'm going to set this to fill. And in the image property, we're going to enter in Bing Maps dot get map v2. Okay. And now we need to define what, what type of map overlay we want. I'm just going to go with Arial. And then we need to select a zoom. I'm going to go with 18. And now we need to enter the latitude and longitude coordinates, which will be data out of our collection. So first, um, call locate at col location dot point dot coordinates. So our first value needs to be for latitude, comma, first call location dot point dot coordinates dot longitude. Okay, so if I close that out, a map may appear, it may not, it has the wrong value. Okay, so we don't have an address in our collection yet. So let us enter in an address, West Addison Street, Chicago. Illinois, three, get location. Okay, so our map now displays um, our location. We can take this a little bit further. I'm gonna add some more um, parameters to this line here. So we'll do squiggly bracket, push pin. So we'll add a push pin to add a comma first push pin icon style I'm going to set this to 37 push pin latitude so I'm just going to pick up um, our collection data. So first call location dot point dot coordinates dot latitude. Okay, comma push pin longitude and then I will just copy this like so paste in there dot longitude okay so close that out with a square uh, with a curly bracket and now we have a push pin on our location all right let's add some more functionality to this I'm gonna add a slider. Bring that down here. I'm going to name this 
SLD zoom. Okay. So I believe that my maximum for maps is 20 on zoom. My minimum will be one. And we can set a default of 12. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up the name of this control. I'm going to go back to my map. This 18, I'm going to change to that dot value. So SLD zoom dot value. Okay. So it picked up the default value, which is currently 12. And now if I hold my Alt key, I can zoom in and out of that location. Okay, very good. I can make this map a little bit bigger. I can bring this down. All right. Okay, now I want to add some buttons for uh, our users to be able to switch between map overlays. I'm going to add two buttons down here. On the first button, I'm going to go to the text property. I'm going to change this to Arial. I'm going to go to the on select property. And we will say update context. Map overlay. And we will say Arial with labels on demand on demand close that out okay I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna go to my other button so on select I'm gonna paste that in and I'm just gonna change this to road I'm going to drop down to the text property and just update that. Road. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, the map overlay. I'm going to go to my map. I'm going to replace Arial with that. And we get an error because this um, variable has not been set yet. What we can do um, to remedy that is we'll go to the screen and then go to the on visible property. And I'm just going to pick up uh, any one of these, pick up that. So this will be our default map when the user first um, enters, the, enters the application. So with that set, let's try it see if it works. So if I hit this button, Okay, our aerial map is displayed. Roadmap. All right, very good. So there are a lot of different map overlays you could do. You could set it up like buttons here. You could do a drop down with all the map overlays. Um, but those are variables that you can set to add some more functionality to your map. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit. Okay, the last thing I'm going to add is a label. Bring it over here. And within here, we're going to add um, latitude and longitude data about the location. So I'll say lat latitude. Amber saying. First call location dot point dot coordinates dot latitude. I'm just going to copy all this. Ambersan, change this to longitude and change this last part to longitude. 
Okay, so that displays there. Put a space right there. And we can make this look a little bit better. Change it to white with a background. Okay. So now if I clear my location, the map is blank, but there is an error within Power Apps. To take care of that error, we will add an if statement to our line here. So I'm going to say if exclamation point is empty, okay, comma, and what we will be checking to see if it is empty is our collection. Okay, so I think that took care of that error. And now if I enter in an address, get location. All right, so we're centered um, on the location that I entered. We have our latitude and longitude displayed at the top. We can switch to different map overlays and zoom in to that location. So I could take these coordinates, clear out this form, and then get location by these coordinates. Okay, same, same results. So this concludes this video on Bing Maps with Power Apps. And you can see that um, we covered a lot of functionality. There's a lot of things that you could do with this information. One thing that I found useful is if I have an application where users are doing data entry, um, if they're in, entering in an address, I can query Bing, get the coordinates to that address, and then patch that data into my data set. So that is something that can be dumped into a report or anything very easily and uh, a lot more useful than just a straight address. So hopefully you found this useful. If you did, uh, maybe you could like or even go a little bit further and subscribe to this channel. And I thank you for watching.